Okay, we're up to the stage of putting the clutch on now. We have the pilot bearing fitted to the flywheel here. We have a clutch aligning tool and we start off with the clutch plate here, your main drive plate. It's got an offset on it. You can see a, a big dish here, so that dish comes out. And then what we can do, we put the tool in. Put that there, and we know that there now is lined up and we can bring the main clutch assembly that we've just put together up over the clutch tool. So, and don't worry about anything being lined up yet, you just don't have to worry about that. Now, these pieces in here, these are little tin pieces and they're little spaces if yours your tractor had these, make sure you put them back in. And I was never sure what they were for, but I was talking to an old file and he reckons with the piece of tin sitting up ceiling here, through through these bits there, um, that causes a, a fan effect, which helps clean the rubbish out of, um, you know, any clutch dust and that gets rid of that and keeps it cool and all that. So whether that's right or not, I, I don't know, but that's just what I was told one time, so that seemed to stick with me. So, so at this stage, most of your bolts have got like a, a short thread and a long, um, a long dowel section, I suppose, for want of a better word. So we can put these bolts through. and they'll hold those fan bits in place. It's just a bit easier sometimes than trying to get them all lined up in there together. So we'll just pop a few. Bolts in. I still got my squeaky chair. It's just the right height for doing this job, so it's staying. in there now this clutch wasn't out of this tractor so there's no center pop marks to line up or anything like that um, normally when you take a clutch out you can center punch it and you know center punch everything so it all goes back and you know it's balanced well but look what we can do now we can just bring this clutch just up a little bit and we've just gone up to the fat section of the clutch aligning tool and this she wants to drop away because I bugger down with it we can just line that up with the flywheel here and get a couple of bolts started and get my knee under it here to Give it a little bit of a start. Now I had a spring here somewhere, a little ratchet. Come on, Bessie. Get a bit of a turn, sometimes it just helps to seat everything in a little better. That's just starting, try and take them up even if you can. Started by finger. Let's start by finger. Oh, 
I know you can see the back of my hands. You can see the fingers coming down as we're clamping. The fingers are coming down slowly. Look, another thing to bear in mind is before you put these plates in, put them on the gearbox end of the shaft. Sounds silly, but look, sometimes splines can look the same and they're just not quite or they've been damaged. And when you're trying to put the tractor together, you're pushing and heaving and buggering around and you just can't get it to line up. Because, um, yeah, there's a little burr or damaged spline. So yeah, when you get your clutch plates, try them on the gearbox end first. Well, here we are with the clutch off again. <laughs> I was just running around the bolts and I didn't even get them tight and one of them broke. And so, here it is here. And I noticed there was a couple of different bolts in the clutch and look, I didn't take much notice of it. I just said, oh yeah, someone's replaced a bolt. But when we look at these bolts, They've been over tensioned in their life and if I can bring it up and show you, the thread's fat here but you can see it's wasted away here. It's, it's quite a bit narrower. Now, I don't know if I can, if you can see the air gap, the, the thread's fat here and then it gets, it's got like a waist, a narrow waist in it there. And that's where the bolt's been stretched. So. I had a look at a few of the others and they're all like that, so out with the old, in with the new. So I do have some bolts here, they're 5 16th UNC and they bolt in nicely though. So we're going to put a full set of bolts in and that one there is bottoming out. I will have to probably cut a little piece off them, but that's no problem. But now that gives us another little job to do, so I thought you might find it interesting. And the job is to getting the broken piece of bolt out. Now, where is it? There it is up here. So, I'll bring it over my way a little bit, just so it's within my reach a little bit better. I'll take that plate out so we don't fill it with metal. And To get that out, it's important to drill the bolt down the centre. So I have a, a rigid um, bolt removing set. Some of the bits are missing now, but what we need to do is we pop this guide there, and then with that guide, we can find a drill here, and I think it's 3.2 mil, or it would probably be around 1.8. And that drill is snug down through the centre there. So what the idea is, is to hold this in there nice and true, get the drill and make sure we drill a centre in the bolt. And if someone tells you there's no such thing as a left hand drill, tell them they got their hand on it. That's a standard drill and that's a left hand drill. And so the idea of a left hand drill is once you have a hole in it, you can push the left hand drill in and it, it may grab the burr and it'll actually screw it out for you. So let's see. Um, we'll see if we've got one that looks 
This little fella here looks about the sharpest of them. I, I need to update that. I've, I haven't. Um, when I had the shop, everyone used to borrow it and um, didn't get looked after that well. So, so we put the put the little. That's important. Make sure it's straight. So what that's done for us up the hole there, that's given us a centre. So we're actually sitting pretty well right on centre, so I'll get my head down for a look. Yeah, we're not doing too bad. I haven't drilled in very deep, but what I might do now, we have a centre and the drill here shouldn't run off. We'll just put a left hand in and we'll put a bit of pressure on. I'm hoping that it just bites in and comes out. Might have to get up and put a bit of force there. And there you go, the backwards drill. Has just grabbed that little piece of broken bolt or the left backwards drill, the left hand drill. Has grabbed that little piece of bolt and brought it back out. So, so with our new bolts, I've I've gone a little bit longer, so we can try and replicate this little bit of um, flat there. I can't do it exactly, but look, it's pretty close. So now on the all six bolts, I'll go and I'll dock the end of them about four threads worth and we should have a nice new set of bolts and yeah I'll feel a lot safer about it anyway. Okay take two we've got some lovely new bolts that we've we've all cut down and got organized so it's getting a full set and a full set of new spring washers as well so we should be right to rock and roll again. So I'll get some of the junk out of the way. I'll, I'll put the clutch plate back in. Oh boy, I'll pick up the clutch. And I'll take these old bolts out. See that's a homemade bolt that someone put in at some stage. And that one there's wasted there as well. So, yeah, playing with fire, leaving those old bolts in. So, and that's one someone's put in too. I had noticed there was two different ones, but I didn't worry too much at the time. But yeah, I should have had a better look, shouldn't I? Really? I'll give myself a good talking to later. Maybe. Probably not. Okay, so we can pop these. Whoops. Nice new spring washer. I was saying I don't normally use a tension wrench on these bolts, but um, we just nip them up and they're good. They've got a spring washer and all on them and 5 16 bolts, about 22 pounds, something like that. So, But anyway, looks like some big fisted bugger's been there before me. And that can go in there. And another two. So that slows up work a little bit when you've got to do this sort of stuff, but in the end you have a nice job. It's all about doing a good job. Right, now we'll lift this fella up again. And around there is where the... Now 
make sure these little veins or little spaces are in the right spot. Once more, nice and even. Yeah. Just full of satin. Yep, he's on his way. Just trying to keep the gap here nice and even. Use me big screwdriver rather than being the little one. That might make a difference. Even at this stage, all your plates should be loose. You can slop them around a little bit. And just look for this Belleville spring here. Make sure that's sitting nice and even, which it is. Dog having a cough in the background. What are you been doing, Kelly Dog? That's all we were doing before, just giving them a little nip up and the bolts broke so <laughs> I'm glad it happened now you can look at things two ways you can get oh, a lot of pain in the bump that's um it's made the job longer and harder getting a broken bolt out and all that but then look at the bright side we got a better job now and it's better to have happened now than than later on the bolts shouldn't fall out we got spring washers on them so Oh, 
just ran them all again. Okay, now, now our clutch plate, we know our plate's lined up, so when we go back, um, go back under the gearbox, we'll be okay. So now's the time to take these transport bolts out. Now, I have heard from, <laughs> we've sold people new clutches and they ring up and say, that clutch you sold us, it's slipping. We say, oh, is it really? Now, did you take those transport bolts out? And the phone goes quiet. And, um, yeah, they didn't. So, <laughs> I had one bloke one day and he was right up me. He says, that clutch, I bought this clutch. I got my whole tractor together and I don't want to have to split it again. And going right off about everything. He wasn't having a good day. And... <clears throat> He wanted me out there and he wanted the track to split and the clutch taken out and the whole lot and I thought, oh well, I better go and have, have a talk to this bloke, he's only like 30 k's away. And um, so off I goes out to have a look and hops underneath and pulls the plate off underneath and I said, you've left the bloody transport bolts in. Well, everything went quiet. <laughs> anyway, we pulled him out and got him on his way. He was a happy fella after that. <laughs> he ended up being a really good customer too, but just um, he wasn't happy. All right, so now we have full clamping pressure there. We can take this fella out, so we know all our plates are lined up nicely. All right, we might come around the side and. We'll go through adjusting these little PDO screws so, and try and explain how that works. Okay, here's the, the engine and the flywheel and the clutch and, and I'm going to zoom you in here. And this little bolt here, that works when, well, well, the adjustment here determines when your um, second stage of your clutch comes in. And this plate here that it pushes on, you, you can see, yep, you can see the yellow in here. That's your PDO clutch plate. And as your fingers push down, the main plate that the springs are hooked to here, it comes up, then once it comes up a certain amount, which you set here, your main clutch plate will be released, so, so you'll be able to um, get your tractor into gear and all that. And then the second stage pushes against this plate here, and this plate here, that, pushes, that then pushes against the, um, the Belville spring and that releases your PDO. So what we normally look at doing here is see, see you have a little gap you have a little gap in here and that's enough once that gap is taken up um, your PDO plate should be free enough to turn on its own. So the clamping pressure um, is, is pushed off and, and it should be okay. So to determine when this second stage comes in, we have to set the gap between the head of this bolt here and when it pushes on this PDO plate. So the book says 90 thou, and I found with 90 thou, you push your first one down, then you have a fair way to go before you get your second stage clutch. And when the, um, uh, and why they say 90 thou is, is as this PDO plate wears, that will decrease and you know, it'll get less and less and less as the time goes on. Um, but look, I've, I've found with experience, I've set some at 90 and I just don't like the feel of it. So I set them at around 65, 70 thou. Now, don't get too hung up on that measurement. Um, 
you can adjust this from underneath you can see under the tractor and when you pull the plate off the bell housing at the bottom you can get to this no worries and it's an adjustment that you can do um, at any stage so if your PDO clutch is not releasing sometimes this gaps too big and if your pedals out of adjustment it releases the main clutch but then you don't actually get to push the PDO apart so look I, I like to set it at about 65 I've got 60 seven thou worth of feeler gauges here now and look it's as simple as you wind this out until it until it just takes up that gap and once again it's really important more important than what the gap is is to make sure that you have the same feel that's even so so if we we can just feel a little bit of tension there so we know we're up there. So now we can tighten the lock nut. Oh, and that turned. You usually do need two spanners for this job. So once you're happy with the with the feel of your clearance there, you stop this one from turning with one spanner and you tighten up the lock nut with the other. Some of these are really tight, people over tighten them. There's no need for it. So then we can check that gap. And that's just a little bit tight, so we might just give that a bit of a, a bit of a tweak. Okay, that's a good feel there. I'm happy with that. Let's turn the flywheel over. Oh, man. Okay, let's turn the engine over from here and we do all three of those. So where's your, yep, you can see that, that's in frame. So once again, we'll just loosen this lock nut. Let that come out. Feeler gauges in. And then tighten up the lock nut. No big deal, it's a it's a simple job. It is a bit fiddly under the tractor though, I must admit. Yep, that's good. We'll check them all again. There should be one under here. Okay, they all feel the same. So, what happens now is when we depress the clutch on the tractor, I'll pan out just a little bit I think. When we depress the clutch on the tractor, the first stage lifts and the levers actually pull, the, pull that first plate off the main drive plate so it can spin freely and until it takes up this gap here, your PDO stays driving. So you can actually put your foot halfway down on the clutch, um, change gears and your slasher or your baler or whatever you have on the back remains driven. And once it uses this gap here up, well then it releases, your main plate's already released, then it releases your PDO, and that stops and you can get your PDO into gear. Now, 
If you don't like the pedal feel, you can make this bigger. And like the book says, I think it's 90 there or something, but I've, I found, for what I like, that's too much. But, um, so when this gap's bigger, say, say you've got this set and your main clutch is dragging, it's not releasing properly, and there's not much on your pedal between your first and second stages on your clutch. Well, you can make that gap bigger so that your main clutch releases a bit more so the gap's bigger, so at the moment, this main plate inside, it releases around 67th hour to let the main drive plate release, and then it does the other. But the, the book says 90-odd thou, around 85 to 95 thou, I think. I like it like this. Make up your own mind. Um, but be aware that you can adjust that to have the feel that you like for what you're doing. So, um, yeah, if you'd like, if your clutch is dragging a bit, you can make more gap here. Um, if your PDO's not releasing, you can take this gap up and make it smaller. And so that makes the PDO push away just that little bit further. So anyway, we'll come around and we'll have a look at the fingers. Okay. The second stage of our, of our finger setting is making sure that these screws here that the throw out bearing pushes on are even. Now, if I find my verniers, oh here they are here. And if we measure from the fl flat of this plate here down to the fingers there, look on this we end up with about oh look 40 millimeters something like that um, yeah that can actually come down a bit but look once again as as your clutch wears these fingers become higher and higher and higher and at this stage with new plates your fingers sit down a little bit and you'll notice these screws uh, just on a slight angle in but as the clutch wears they'll straighten up but you must make sure you've got a nice radius here so when the bearing pushes there's no drag on these you can just put a wipe of grease over them but that's okay but look once again don't get too wound up with the um, with the measurements of these things you do have a you have a lot of adjustment on your um, on your pedal, and look, I, I've found you're usually pretty close if you have say one or two threads coming through the finger here. You're pretty good, and we have a lock nut there to check it. But once again, it's more important to be level than it is to worry about half a millimetre or ten thousandths of an inch on that thing, so so this one here, we've got him I might just go down a little bit with that I think and I have a couple of, couple of threads sticking out now as these housings and that wear, these fingers sit down a bit lower and that's where you can actually gain a bit by setting your fingers a bit higher, so And if you have these down too far, I have seen them tag those rivets there. These, these fingers here, look, they only move about three eighths of an inch. They, they don't move an awful lot. And I've seen these sit down in too low as you get a little bit of wear through the pivots and you know, a little bit of wear here, a little bit there, and a little bit in the next thing. And it all adds up. So these fingers in turn actually get a little bit lower. Um, the fingers sit lower because of the wear. So what happens then is when you push the finger down, the back of the finger, the back of the bolt tags the rivets. So you can hop in from underneath and, and well look, you can't really, you can't get your bloody hand up there properly. But, <laughs> but anyway, look, ha have them just about a thread at the back there. So we'll just push down on here, make sure it's right home and on this one, what do we have? Massey Ferguson has a proper gauge for this. 
I don't have one, but right, we're sitting on. Forty one and a half millimeters. So we will lock that off at that. Check it again, just make sure of our measurement so we can make them all match. Yep, 41 and a half. So that means we can bring this fella here. Half, so we need to bring this fellow up. And if you'll notice this, we measured this on the side, so measure this one on the side as well. Need to come out a little bit. Forty and a half, one more mil. This is where I suggest getting them, you know, I say don't worry about five or ten thou or something like that. This is where it's important. Oh, a little too much. Okay, we'll nip that up there, I think. And we'll have a re-measure. Oh, we're at 42. There we go, 41 and a half. I'll just nip this up again. And then we'll run across to this next one. Whoop. And what do we have here? I'll just check this again. These are all a little bit um a little bit of movement in this, yeah, it's a little worn but Okay, let's 
just got to go down a little. I've got to come up a little now. Bit of a fiddle, but anyway, that's okay. As long as we get it right, we're good. Oh, look at that, spot on. I'd like to take this one in just a little more. Like I say, even here is important. Oops. I should have took that out, not in. Gosh, it's hard to get good help, isn't it? Okay, look, that's fine. So once you've set the side there, set this. You can adjust the side, like I said, but it's up to you. And that's it. We'll get ready to put the tractor back together.